Hello friends, today I'm going to be painting this adorable King Charles Spaniel. The colour palette shows how I'm returning to my comfort zone using colours such as black, burnt umber, Payne's grey, white, raw sienna, yellow ochre and raw sienna. This colour palette is very similar to the one that I used in the corgi video. I personally find painting subjects with two different predominant colours is a lot easier than a subject that has one predominant colour like the Westie I painted last time. I also made sure to pick a subject that also had a shadow to one side which is why I picked this King Charles Spaniel in particular. As always I started off by working on the eyes and then working outwards. You'll probably notice that the colours on my palette look a little bit messy, but for me it makes sense as I go from darker colours to lighter colours and then I can easily pick the highlights and lowlights on my painting. This is one of the reasons that I particularly enjoy working with acrylics as you can easily switch from lighter colours to darker colours as other mediums such as watercolours aren't so forgiving as you have to start with the light colours and then go darker gradually. I found that painting the right side of the face was good practice to figure out what colours seem to work well, so when I painted the left side of the face I first blocked out the area with this light yellowy tone and then added the different colours to define the ear. This also meant that I painted the left side a lot quicker from what I learned from painting the right side as instead of painting each individual colour I first blocked out the lightest colour and then added each stroke afterwards. This just goes to show that a little bit of practice can help improve your painting process and your efficiency. Once I was happy with painting those more tan colours of the face, I started working on the white areas of the face and also the nose. With the white fur in this painting, I think I learned a lot from painting the other dogs of white fur, such as the Westie. The main thing I learned is to make realistic white fur is really key to have really subtle subtle shadows. As you can see I've just put very very light greys around the top of the face to define it and the darkest grey shadows underneath the muzzle and around the nose as these are where you'd find the deepest shadows. Once I was done with the King Charles Spaniel's face, it was time to add the browns and beiges to the body of the King Charles Spaniel. And once I had blocked those out, it was time to work on the white fur on the neck and the tummy of this King Charles Spaniel. At this point in the painting I was really happy with the face, I thought I managed to pull it off quite well and achieve the look that I wanted. However, I'm not going to lie, I, although I have improved slightly with white fur painting, it's still quite intimidating to me as my painterly style is usually quite bold and I like to show off my brush strokes and have relatively big shifts in colours. Whereas painting stuff like white fur requires real subtlety and that's something that is not really common in my paint style. So it's something that I'm still working on um, as there's always room for improvement. I also noticed in the reference photo that there was light shades of pink on this little puppy's tummy. So I thought I'd pick up on that colour in the background. 
I created this pink by using shades of white, red and also a little bit of burnt umber just to mute it down so it wasn't too baby pink and bright. And once that background colour was all laid out it was time to work on any areas that needed a little bit more detail just to really bring this little puppy to life. After painting the background is usually a really key moment for me in terms of painting as just like with anything if you take a break from it, a break from an area of your painting or a break from anything, when you come back to it you have fresh perspective and you can really spot what you need to do or in my case what I need to repaint or slightly adjust. I really enjoyed making this painting, mainly because I returned back to my comfort zone by using a more variety of colours, but also gave me a chance to practice my white fur once again. If you have any thoughts on what this little puppy should be called, be sure to let me know in the comments down below.